right. All right, we're at Book Passage here in San Francisco with Adam Carolla. This is a big book signing. There are a lot of people in there for you. Yeah, I'm quite popular. I know. We can so tell. I can tell my family. Yeah, Book Passage. It's kind of weird. I guess I guess it's named because we're, it's a sort of nautical theme. I think so. We're right by the ocean. Yeah. You know, it was weird. I was in there, and I was saying to the guy who worked there, man, this is awesome. I mean, you work right here. You're here every day. This is this is your view. You, you stare out the window at, at this. And uh, he said, uh, well, once in a while, they stick me at the one in Marin County. And I was like, oh, man, the humanity. <laughs> Dump. Marin County. And then I said, uh, what is that right over there? Is that Treasure Island? And he went, uh, yeah, I don't know. And I went, wow. <laughs> Took him a few beats. And he said, yeah, but it was like, you stand by this window all day, every day. You're staring at Treasure Island all day, every day. And the guy goes, what is that? And he goes, huh. yeah, I don't know about that one. You see it every day. It gets boring, you know. Yeah, I guess you block it out. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the book is doing well. Sure. And uh, you're still getting love line questions, though. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> how, how often do people want to talk about love lines still? Every uh, day? I guess about as often as Monica Lewinsky gets hit up about the president's cock. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, still talking about that old subject? Why can't we talk about my handbags? Uh I, you know, I guess when you do something for as long as uh, I did that, and then you, you get people, you see, the thing is, is uh, Angela Lansbury doesn't get bothered about murder she wrote because all of her fans are dead, because that show's 15 years old, and the average age of the person that watched murder she wrote was 77, right. and so they're all gone. But if you do Loveline. And the average age of the person who listens is 15. Now they're all 25 and 30, so they keep coming back to me. So there's a math. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So you don't mind the questions? No, I don't mind the questions. I'm just saying Lawrence Welk did not get stopped on the street 10 years after a show went off the air because everyone who watched it was dead. Right. That's a good thing, though, that you were on for 11 years. I mean, that's, a, that's it's kind of a feat in the business. Yeah, it is. It, it is a it is a feat. Or uh, let's make it a foot. I don't want to call it. Yeah. it's not worth two feet. But uh, yeah, I did it well. I technically it was probably about ten and three quarters or something. I don't remember exactly when I started, but I remember it was just shy of eleven years. Yeah. And so the book. What made you decide to put a book out now? You're well, doing this tour now. And it, it was a process of somebody calling my agent and asking me if I'd write a book, and then me saying how much and then saying here's how much and me going nah it's not enough and then them going all right we'll pay you more and then me going okay i'll write a book that's how everything in hollywood works exactly yeah. so do they pay you per page or how did that go i made them pay me <laughs> cash on the barrel head per page yeah and it starts to add up pretty quick so a lot of pages just had two and three words on it you know just but once they got wise to that they it was, stopped it was big font right? yeah. yeah big font that was my gay porn name for a long time who are you working with big font wow look out and you, you're busy though you got this book signing you're doing a show tonight at the palace of fine arts you, oh yeah 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 and what about this i know you're not chop liver exactly yeah. exactly interviews with fanbolt yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Big press. I came down here to do an interview with you, exactly. and I said to my people, look, if there's time, we'll sign, we, some books. we'll sign some books, and we'll do a show tonight. But it depends. If we stand out here for eight, ten hours, then okay. uh, there'll be no show tonight. Exactly. Let's do a marathon interview. Yeah, we will. Like Dane Cook on stage for nine hours, you know? We'll yeah, that. we'll set the record. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's awesome. Exactly. So yeah. you were talking about having to walk up hills, though, in San Francisco. I wonder if there's ever interviews that are done about marathons where people go, we're going to do a marathon interview, and the person goes, oh, no, but they don't realize it's just ten minutes on the topic of marathoning. Exactly. You know what I mean? I never thought of that. Hmm? That's a Walking good idea. Walking up the hill? Yeah, uh, you had to walk up some hills. To get no, I had to walk hill. down some hills, yeah. and then my seconds will carry me up the hill, as, they, as they're trained to do. Anytime we hit more than a 3% grade. Mike carries you? Mike will carry me, and, and it doesn't matter how long the hill is. Like, sometimes just that little handicap curb at the, at the end of this crosswalk, yeah. I'll just stand and wait. I don't care if it's three foot long. I need to be lifted. 
that's the way. And he carries your sunglasses too. Carries my sunglasses, and the only time he doesn't carry me is when he's breaking in my shoes because I don't want the extra weight distribution to screw up the break in of the shoe. As a matter of fact, it's very important that we maintain the exact same weight in order that the shoe. I wear an Italian loafer, Bruno Mali style loafer, though it's more exclusive. It's very important. When someone's breaking in your shoe, you don't want a 300-pounder breaking in your shoe, right. and you don't want a 110-pounder breaking in your shoe. I currently weigh 197 pounds, and it's important that Mike stay at exactly 197 pounds when he breaks my shoes in. Now, if I go up to 202, he goes up to 202. If I drop down to 195, you can do the math. So do you watch, his, uh, you watch what he eats? He weighs in twice a day. It's, it's, it's casual. We don't make him take his underpants off, but he just should strip down. You know, to at least, I mean, if he's wearing a boxer brief, it'll have to come off. But if he's wearing just a, you know, thong back or something like that, he, you know, obviously weighs in. And I'm not going to hassle him if he's, you know, within three or four ounces. But, you know, he gets nine, ten ounces away from me. Yeah, we got an issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, and the people ask me all the time, well, what do you do then? What if he's too, you know, what if he went off for a weekend? And, uh, you know, he, he ate a little too much cheese, and he packed on, you know, uh, a couple of pounds, or he lost a couple of pounds. Yeah. You know, I tell him, uh, it's simple. If he goes down, we'll sandbag him. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll put on a couple of sandbags on him and get it, make up the weight, the point. The point is we make up the weight. Right, exactly. And so buy the book. Check out his website. you got a show. You're a busy guy. Mm -hmm. So, right, you want them to buy the book. It'd be nice if you bought the book. If you don't, you know, you don't have to, but all the cool kids are buying it. So if you don't want to be a cool kid, I mean, that's, that's cool. I know you like to hang out on the ultranet and watch your computer and all that stuff. And I know your stepdad's pretty pissed off. He told me he, he doesn't want you buying the book. So if you're going to listen to what the man says, uh, it's your business. Exactly. Buy the book. In 50 years, we'll all be chicks. No, well, don't buy it. Stepdad doesn't want yeah, you to you buy don't it. Don't buy it. And neither does your school counselor. That's right. Thanks, Adam, for hanging out with us, and uh, have a good show tonight. My uh, my pleasure, Tyler or Taylor. <laughs>